Hi, right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Bobby D coming to you live from the Lombard Super Philippines. We're here at a race in uh, the Lombard Super Philippines. We're at a racetrack and they're doing it. They're doing it right side long ago. Motorcycle racing in the Philippines. These they are here at the racetrack and the guys are going at it. Whenever you're in a race, it's a struggle. It's a struggle to stay on top. It's a struggle to get to the top. And when you get to the top, you don't want to stop. When you get to the top, you don't want to stop. When you get to the top, you don't want to drop. I don't know who the winner is going to be, but I want to. I know that riding a motorcycle is very, very difficult when you're racing. It's okay when you're not racing, but when you're racing somebody, it can be very, very dangerous. So, whoever won the race, congrats. All right, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, there's a lot of people out here. People love racing in the Philippines. It's a nice sport to be in. People are here, cars are lined up. Everybody's trying to see their favorite race, racer, motorcycle racer, do their thing. And you see we got more people coming out here. They want to see. Okay, just to let you guys know, Whenever you come to the Philippines, be ready to be Anything is possible when you're in the Philippines, okay? All right, Lisa D and I are headed out for the race now. We're going to our, one of our next locations for the day. Uh, get in the car now. Whew. Hi. How'd that do? Yeah, man. <laughs> Running up, y'all. You should rent to the, um, what's that, tent? No, I don't want to go to the tent. There's too many people in that tent. Yeah, but uh, let's go, Listy. Okay, so you guys got a chance to see how we live our life in the Philippines. This is our life. We do things different. Every day is a different uh, chapter that we begin in our life. And we have fun every day. And I want to suggest to you, if you're looking for a nice place to live, if you're looking for a peaceful time in your life, if you're looking for the enjoyable life, huh? And, and you wanna have peace, you wanna have freedom, this is the place to be. Yeah, this is our life in the Philippines. This is our life and we share it with you because we just don't know what to do. <laughs> Nah, man. We share it with you because we want you to see the benefits of living in the Philippines. We saw a race just now. We're gonna. We have to leave. We can't say stay for the whole race. Plus, it's too loud. Bust my ears out. <laughs> I love it, y'all. But yeah, um, we just coming from a race, y'all. I was out here. Lisa D didn't want to go there. He said, "I didn't want to go right there." So I went by there and looked at it. It's nice. But things happen here, man. You got race track driving out here. You know, motorcycle racing. And you see all the more, there's more, there's more, more also. see more racers are coming right now, right there. See, they're coming in, see, coming in, they're going to the race, you know, what's wrong with that? Who said they cannot be motorcycle racing in the Philippines, huh? Who said that? You better watch yourself before you be by yourself, because there is motorcycle racing in the Philippines, okay? <laughs> yeah! I just proved it. So anytime somebody tell you, they don't race, I don't do no race out there. They don't do no race out there. You just shut them up. So you, you need to stop that right there. Stop the lie. Tell them, tell them stop the lie. <laughs> just like that. Shut them up. Say, so stop the lie, sir. <laughs> and you'll shut them up. Okay? Because there is, I just showed you, proof positive. There's racing out here. Okay? Lisa D, this is a BMX racing course. And uh, Lisa D and I have been out there. We 
they have uh i don't know you ever heard gc you ever heard of this midget car racing uh we was in a midget car race and it's hard to get i don't know if y'all ever been in one of those things it's hard to get in them little cars you know and we i, I got in but the man had to help me get out <laughs> it was so low man i had to get i got in i said man i can't get out of this thing <laughs> And the man had to help. <laughs> he said, that's how old I am. <laughs> hey, I ain't, I'm proud to be old. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm proud to be old. Because a lot of people didn't get my age. A lot of people didn't, didn't see daylight. They under they six feet under. Because they didn't make it. But I'm thankful that the Lord let me see I'm still in the land of the living. You know what I'm saying? And so if you out there get mad because you old, you just better straighten that up right now, mister. <laughs> Cause you be thankful that you are alive, okay? A lot of people are uh, not here and they wish they was here, you know? I, I mean, they, they think they wish they would be here. But uh, it's a nice day today. Today is Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we are having an awesome time on our way to get some little groceries. Lisa, Lisa, she don't have no vegetables. You know, we eat a lot of vegetables. We eat vegetables and fruit a lot every day. Every time we eat a meal, Lisa D has fruit and veggies every time, okay? That's part of our meal. And so when we run out, she had to go replenish that. And that's that's all right with me. So that's why we're always heading to the store and on them this lady and that because we, we eat veggies and fruit a lot. One of my main one of my favorite fruits is bananas. I love bananas. And the reason why, if you guys know anything about your fruit fruitology <laughs> if I can say that word bananas are high in potassium mm -hmm. bananas are high in vitamin C mm -hmm. bananas are high in magnesium mm -hmm. yeah and it's a lot of stuff that it does for you. not only that mopped up to the restroom when you need to you know what I'm get you the bananas okay and then next thing you know you'll be running because <laughs> it push you right out but uh uh, bananas are great. I love bananas. I eat two, at least two a day. Also, one other thing, like my guys, if you have problems with your pressure, start eating a couple of bananas every day. That's why I had to, when I started eating bananas, I let I was on that blood pressure. I let the medicine go because that bananas dropped my pressure. Yep, you know? two things dropped my pressure. Number one, I started eating two bananas a day minimum. Sometimes I eat three every day. Okay. I saw my pressure drop like that. And I said, man, I'm gonna let this pill go. I let it go. And then it started to slide back up on me. So you know what I did? I did my research. I read where it says, if you drink water, it lowers your pressure. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why water lowers your pressure is because you have to, when you drink a lot of water, you got to do what? Run to the restroom. And every time you run to the restroom, it releases pressure in your body. And that's why, when you, if you ever know anything about high blood pressure, the doctors give you this thing they call the water pill. It's gonna make you go to the water to release the liquids out of your body. So when I did my research and found that, I started drinking me eight to 10 glasses of water a day and my pressure stayed even and steven. Okay? You better learn. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. I'm tell you, man. Call me Dr. Dix if you want to. I'm gonna give you a tip. You wanna let, you wanna let that medicine go? Go on, get you some bananas. Where get you two, your three. License, sir? She needs to say, Where's my license? I got my license in lifeology. <laughs> the school of lifeology. <laughs> the, school, the school of do it yourselfology. Stay, the school of I want to stay off that medicineology. Okay? That's my license. Okay? And so when you uh, eat you two or three bananas a day, eight, eight to ten glasses of water or liquids, don't have to be water, but just liquids. Because the liquids make you go to the restroom too. Your pressure gonna be stable and it's gonna drop like a rock down. Okay? Your doctor, you son, you I'm gonna give you this. I'm gonna not, sir. I don't need all that. I got my I, I got a doctor called Dr. Jesus. Uh-huh. And I'm gonna talk to him first. And, and then and after I talk to Dr. Jesus, I'm gonna pray. And, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna look in, 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 in on the internet and see what I can do. I don't want to get on the medicine. I don't know about y'all, man. I don't like to take no medicine. I don't like taking nobody medication. Yep. You know? I, unless I have to. If you have to, you have to. No, we don't fool. Go to school. But if you have to, you have to. But if I can avoid taking uh, prescriptions, medication, I will avoid it. Okay? I, I just don't like it. I don't feel right taking it. Thank you. So, 
that's what we're doing. We right now we're getting ready. It's gonna get a little dark, y'all. Don't get scared, okay? It's getting a little dark because we're going through the tunnel. We in the parking lot of the Ayala Mall. Lisa D is going to her favorite store. She likes the, the way they have the vegetables, vegetable, 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 the vegetables situated in Yala. So she's going there to get it. And uh, the prices are not too bad. You can get the vegetables better on the street. But she likes the way they have it clean here in Yala. And she likes the way it's presented. This is her favorite. Part. Plus, she got to get some meat too. We eat a little meat every now and then. We don't eat a whole lot, you know, but we, all, we eat a little meat every now and then. But we, have, we got up early, man. I got up early this morning. And, uh, you know. No, you got up late. I got up early compared to you, sister. <laughs> you better stop it right there. She <laughs> told me I got up late. I got up early compared to you, sister. No, tell, run and tell that to somebody. <laughs> These of y'all got to put a two cent in. I don't need you to put your two cent in on me, sister. I got my thing together. You got yours together? Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> but yeah, man, uh, we, we've been out out and about early this morning doing our thing. You know what I'm saying? We always out and about. And we when we go out and about, guess what? I try to bring my people with us because I need to show you how we live it, okay? You, you know, every time you go to the United States, say, man, how you, how you living, man? How you living? We live in large. And in charge. That's how we live. We live in a good life. This is our life in the Philippines. And I want to share it with you, my friends. I want to share it with you. I want to carry it with you. I want to bear it with you. I want to tear it with you. Everything kind of air with you. That's what I want to do. Because I need to show you there's another side of life other than the United States of a doggone America. Huh? You think you, you think, well, I'm in America. That's the best. Place. If you like that shit, you like that kind of living, more power to you, my brother. But there's another side of life that I need to show you. And I can show you better than I can throw you. Okay, man, you with me, G? Let's go, man, you know I don't play. I bring it to you right, tight, long, and strong. We parking in the parking lot now. This dude's parking, she's my chauffeur. Yeah, I train her to drive and she do a good job. She ride me anywhere I want to go. And, uh, I don't have no problem with Lisa D. I said, let's go. She said, okay. And she get in the car and take me where I want to go. I drive too sometimes, but I don't like driving out here. So she respect me in that. And that's that's the way you do your lady, man. Whenever you get a lady in this in this world, I don't care if she Russian. I don't care if she uh, Chinese. I don't, I don't care. care if you're Russian. Anyway. I don't care if you're United States, Ukrainian, whatever. I don't care Train if you're Filipina. Train her right, tight, long, and strong. And she will serve you well, okay? I think I'm playing with you. That's what I did. I trained Lisa D on how I wanted her to be in that ride. And when you get a woman, man, don't let her do anything to you, say anything to you, be anything to you. You train her. So look, I'm gonna teach you. I told Lisa D, I said, look, I'm gonna teach you how to drive. She said, I don't wanna learn. I said, look, calm down, man. I said, I'm gonna teach you how to drive. I, you know, guys, I know how to ride a motorcycle now. Okay, she not. She trying yeah, to brag now. I'm so she, proud of myself. She trying to brag, y'all. She said she. Okay, she. Let me tell you. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back to my point. But I'm gonna tell you about Lisa D. Lisa D rode a motorcycle for the first time. This must be motorcycle weekend for us. <laughs> Lisa D rode a motorcycle for the first time, and she drove it fine. You think I'm playing with you? She drove the motor. She rode it fine. I'm gonna show you the video when we do a live stream. On, on StreamYard, I'm going to show you the video of Lisa D riding on the motor. No, I said when we do the live stream. <laughs> okay, I don't want to show you now. But I'm going to show y'all. Next time we do a live stream on StreamYard, Lisa D rode a, a motorcycle, guys. I'm talking about a motorcycle. I ain't talking no bicycle. I told her how to ride a bicycle. I didn't teach her how to ride a motorcycle. She just got on it. Our, our maintenance guy, his name is, um, what's it, Amai. Amai. Our maintenance guy rides a motorcycle, right? And so Lisa D was outside watering the grass. She said, ma'am, you want no, me? I was riding the, Lizzie, let, let me go, Lizzie, let me go. Bicycle. Let me go, Lizzie. Me, I, ain't, I don't need your details. Lizzie went outside, and then next thing you know, he said, ma'am, you, want, you wanted me to show you how to ride this motorcycle? Because she had asked him one time, and he never got back to her. So she got on a bike, and she rode it. I'm telling you, she rode it. The first time she got on the bike, on a motorbike. I'm telling you, man, this D is bad. She's one man, bad man, but damn, don't mess with her. Somebody better down to mess with her. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. So she's been hyped up ever since she rode that motorbike. 
Nah. I am so proud of myself. I'm proud of you too, my dear. You did a good job. I love you so much. You rode that Thank bike, you. and I didn't teach you how to ride the bike. She taught herself pretty much. But, you know, uh, that's what go to show you. I'm going to go back to my story I was telling you, okay? So, uh, when I said, I said, Lisa D, I'm going to show you, I'm going to teach you how to ride. She said, she said, what? I said, you heard me. I'm going to teach you how to drive this car. He said, I'm not want to learn how to drive. I said, you're going to learn today. Just like that. You, you have to train your lady, okay? You know, a man that has a woman, a man that has a wife, a man that has kids, a man that has a family, and they don't train their people, that man ain't worth a flip. You do yourself a disservice and your family a disservice when you don't train them. Okay? And let me tell you this. Whenever you get married, I'm talking about married folks. Now, you married folks out there, or you want to be married people, let me tell you something. Don't try to hold back stuff, okay? Well, if we gonna get married, but I ain't gonna tell about this. I got, I got this check of the cow. You know, I ain't gonna tell about it. Don't do that. You wrong. If you love that woman and that woman loves you, she need to know everything about you and that rhyme. Okay? Everything you got, cause you never know when you could get be, you get sick. Who gonna take care of you? Hmm? Mama and them, sister and them, brother and them. They ain't gonna look at you. It's your the one you marry that's responsible for you. So if you marry somebody. And you trying to hold back your accounts, you trying to hold back your mom tie from them? Wrong. Now, am I saying as soon as you marry, let them know you got everything? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying give them time to see if they're gonna work out. Because a lot of times people get married and it just don't work out. But you've been married about a year, two years, you know if it's gonna work out or not. Okay? After that, you see the trustworthy, then you let, hey, look, I wanna show you all my finances. I love you so much, and I know we're we're destined to be together. I want to show you because something happened to me. I need you to do this. I need you to do this. I need you to take care of me. I don't want nobody coming and taking all my money. So I love you. I know you can't. You got my back. I got yours. This is what we're doing. And you show her, man. That's what I did with Lisa D. It's three years before I opened it up to her. I showed her how to do the budget. I showed her finances, everything. And she's doing it pretty much now. I check up on her and make sure she ain't, you know, you know, some people slip and slide. <laughs> but I check up to make sure everything's tight. Cause that's what I'm. That's my job. I'm the overseer of my house. I oversee everything. Now I give Lisa D a lot of latitude. She has a lot of leeway because she's a. She does a lot of things. But I check her. Uh, Sometimes I have to put her in check. You know? The one. Uh, the other day I had to put her in check. She went and uh said we're gonna buy something. One of the neighbors was selling something. I said, I said, well, hold up. Did you ask me about that first? I said, no. You, you ain't buying nothing without you asking me. Yeah, you got to put them in check because they'll try to get out of order sometimes. But yeah, uh, I'm over everything, okay? But I, I give her the, 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 the responsibility of doing some items in the household and in my budget. But with responsibility, ladies and gentlemen, always comes what? Accountability. So she's accountable and she's responsible for me, to me. I'm accountable and I'm responsible to the most high God. And so she got to do, 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 do for me and I got to do for the Lord. You know, that's how, that's the, that's called the chain of command. You GI Joes out there, the chain of command. Don't mess with the chain of command. When you mess with the chain of command, you're you're creating a, creating a problem in your life. Order is one of the keys of living. You hear me? Oh Lord, oh Lord, I did, I'm giving you a lesson tonight. I'm giving you a lesson. Order. I'm gonna say it again. Order is one of the keys in living right, tight, long, and strong. Order. Hmm? Without no order, you have chaos. Huh? Everything's jacked up. You can't go right, you can't go left, because there ain't no order. When you got orders, you can march. When you're in the military and you got your orders, you can get up and go. Without no orders, you can't do nothing in your life. Hmm? You're a Christian, right? Are you Christian? G, JP, you guys, people, right? Christians out there, y'all got your orders? Your marching orders. What you marching? What you mean about it? What you mean? I'm a Christian, but what you mean marching? I'm not in no army. Yeah. What did you say? You're not in no army? We all as Christians are in the army of the Lord. And we got our marching orders. Spread the gospel. Teach. Preach. Reach them that lost in this world. That's our orders. And that's what we do. We march. And if you ain't got no order in your life, you ain't with a flip. 
you're not organized, you're not, uh, uh, my mind ain't right, you're not stable, you, you're unstable, and, and so you need order to bring what? You need order to bring what? Stability to your life, okay? I don't know why I said all that. Somebody needed to hear this. I don't know who he needed to hear this today, but somebody out there needed to hear this. Because when, when God pushed up for me like that, somebody needed to hear this. You hear me? Better get some order in your life. But, you know, I told her, I said, look, if something happened to me, my dear, I don't have nobody out. I'm out here by myself. You the only family I got out here by myself. And so I need you to look after me. In order for me to look, you to look after me, I got to teach you and I got to reach you. I taught her how to drive. She didn't want to learn. I said, you're going to learn today. And every weekend we went out there to the uh, shopping plaza, the empty shopping plaza, and we drove. And she started crying. You know how these ladies, I you first name. I said, look, I got to fuss at you to do things right. Because she wouldn't listen to me when I tell her to stop. Her. I said, you better stop. I really had to raise my voice. And then she started full of tears. I said, you can cry all you want. But that ain't going to stop you from learning. Tears can roll down your face all you want, my sister. But you're going to learn today. And that's, that's what I did. It took about three weeks before she learned how to ride, drive a car. Because she's really fast on learning. And uh, she got, she you know, when first when she started first driving, I never let her go nowhere by herself. And I, didn't, I always would deal with, with her, and I would drive most of the times. So I would teach her, even teach her as we, she got drive, I was still teaching and show her things. And then she, we went and got her license. She, she passed the license test. I was, she was so happy, y'all. She was so happy. She passed the driving test, did all that. And I said, now, you need to thank God. And she said, yeah. I said, yeah, you heard me. Thank God, because God did this. It wasn't me. God used me to teach you, to reach you, to train you. And that's why you need to give him thanks. And so she she gave thanks to God and she gave thanks to me to us. Thank you. <laughs> but that's how you do, man. When you have a family, whether it's just you and her, you and the kid, whatever, you train your lady. And ladies out there, if you got a man, you train your man too. She trained me too, just like I trained her. Lisa D turned right around and trained me. One thing she didn't like when we first got together. When, you know, sometimes you're in a hurry to go to the restroom and you don't put the seat down. <laughs> she drew up to the good number one. I had to get out of there, you know, because I was staying with her. And then I had to wipe the seat, you know, so uh, uh, that, that, that irked her so bad. So I don't do that no more. You know, I, 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 don't, I used to do that, but I done learned. I done learned. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, it's things like that and a whole ton of other things I can tell you she's taught me. One of the things she's taught me in life is that you have to learn how to relax and enjoy your life. I didn't know how to do it, man. I was always go, 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 go. I never, st and I stayed up all night long most of the time. I don't do that no more, you know? And, and so I feel much better before because of it. Lisa D had to slow me down. She had to slow my roll. I probably would have burned my batteries out a long time ago if it wasn't for her. Because I was like, go, 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 go. I didn't feel, I didn't feel productive unless I was going or doing something or staying up. I didn't feel worthy or nor productive. And so when she showed me that that was not the way for me, I recognized she was right. So I'm telling you, that's an example of how she taught me so many lessons in life about this culture, about how to treat people. You know, I learned some things from her and she's learned some things from me. And so whenever you're in a relationship and you can't learn nothing from your mate, that's gonna be jacked up, buddy. Cause you got the big head, you can't tell me nothing. I know, that's how you do, man. You can't tell me, you don't know. I know, I know, and you don't know a doggone thing. Be real, be honest, man. Recognize your limitations. Hmm? Be humble. Hmm? Be humble, you know what that mean? Bow down to the one you love sometimes. And then the, the one you love bow down to you. Humble yourself, man. You know, when you humble, people can respect you better. But you so Mr. Big and Mr. Big Head, uh, Mr. Big Stuff, you want them bow down to you and you don't ever kiss their feet, but you want them to kiss yours. Come on, man. It's a two-way street here. Ain't nobody your slave. Lisa D is not my slave. She's my wife for life. I understand that, and so I treat her appropriately, okay? 
He said, well, you just tell her what you look like. Nah. Nah, I don't, I don't always tell her what to do. I give her instructions on some things. I give her advice on some things. Some things I do. I said, look, this is what I want you to do. And, uh, but that's how, that's how you have a loving, caring, sharing, uh, flowing, growing relationship. Hmm? She learns. You learn. She loves. You love. She reaches you. You reach her. You te teaches you. You teach her. That's what we call a relationship in love. Tell you, man, I taught y'all some stuff this morning that I didn't even know I was going to teach you about life one-on-one. -on -one. This is our life. We share it with you all the time. Some of you learn some things from us. Some of you haven't learned nothing. So, but don't say I didn't teach you. Don't say I didn't try, okay? But that's what we do. All right, uh, what you up to, Lizzie? What you doing? Mama, tell mama I say hi. I mean, she talking to mama on the phone. They call each other for 15 times a day. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, man. Uh, we 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 saw the racing house racing, and uh, it's nice. I'm just trying to show you how, how things happened here, and, and we didn't pay no money. We just went over there and looked at it. So in the USA, you got to pay to look. <laughs> here, you just go look. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, we had a beautiful day today. We're still out. Get ready to go in the mall. At least you gotta do some shopping, and uh, I'm gonna get me some. I, I go to Bowles Cafe and I'm gonna sit down, and relax myself, cause I done learned how to do that. You know? When you get to so certain age in your life, you don't need no chaos. You don't need nobody, no drama mamas in your life. So if you hooked up with a drama mama, every time you turn around some mess, let that go. Cause the only thing they're gonna do, my brothers and my sisters. Is drag you in the mess and if you like me you, you had a point in your life you don't need no drama you don't need nobody hollering at you cussing you out you don't need nobody slapping you in the face trying to call you this and call you that because you don't want to do what they want you to do if you if you're a point in your life like that like I am you don't need that in your life you know, so if you find out you, you're dating a Filipino and you find out she full of drama and then all she wants is money from you and all that kind of stuff let her go. She's not for you. Okay? That's not the right one. You want somebody that is going to compliment you. Okay? What you mean? What you mean? Compliment me. I don't know what you mean. Compliment? That means that if you have a weakness, they're going to uh, help you strengthen your weakness. Compliment you. You know? If you have a strength, they'll, they'll resource you at the strength in that area. And same with you. You're going to compliment her and you supplant her in her weak areas. That's what you want. Where I'm, so I'm, a, I'm strong in a lot of areas in our relationship, but I'm weak in a lot of areas too. And you thank God the areas that I'm weak in, Lisa D is strong in, you know? And so we complement each other. And I don't try to compete with Lisa D. A lot of you guys, you want to compete with your woman, show you the boss and you in the control, you know? Don't do that, man. Be you, be you and let your lady be her. And if you can't let her be her, you don't need her in your life. You you can't control nobody. Stop being like you. You she's a slave. You the boy. Come on, man. Who died and made you God? Huh? You ain't nobody God. Stop out your mind. Treat that woman right with respect that she's due, and she'll do the same for you. And that rhyme, okay? Makes me so angry when I see men treating women like they slaves and they dirty. Get up here, let her, let her get my food. Let her. Come on, man, there's no way to live. That's a, that's a, that's a mean spirit, you know? Live in love, lead in love, and your life will be better forward. You say, well, you, I can say this now, but back in the day when I first started out dealing with women, I was like that. Do what I say, don't do, do what I say, don't do what I do, do what I say. You know, I have to learn. I burned for a long time in a relationship till I learned you can't treat women like that. You know? I, I, so I know I know of what I talk about. I'm just not talking loud and saying nothing. I'm talking loud and telling you the, the experiences in life that I've had, my life's lessons that I've learned along this way, along this journey. You know? So some of you already know more than me, you know, and that's good. But on this show, each one reach one and each one teach one. I don't never know it all. Cause I'm not a genius. Huh? I'm just a normal guy like everybody else. 
But what I do, what I do is I try to share what I know. I try to share my knowledge with others so that others might learn to do better than what I did and not to make this, the dumb mistakes I made as I grew up in this world, okay? That's what I do. And you know, I'm not trying to put myself on no pedestal. I'm not the one. The only one I put on the pedestal is the Most High God because I know he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's the leader in my life, for life. He gave me life, okay? So that's my talk to y'all today. That's my rant. That's that. Uh, I already find out who Rod Chain Bobby Lee did one nation under group. What up? Who up in this house with me today? I ain't got nobody. I ain't got nobody. I ain't got nobody. Let's see. Who we got up in here, Lee D? Okay, I got a few comments. Uh, what's my Monroe in the house? First man up, Monroe in the house. Monroe, Monroe, Monroe in the house. What's up, Monroe? You good man? So good to see you. So good to see you. So good to see you. He said, hello. <laughs> what's up, Monroe? My brother from another mother. He from the north side. And I'm from the south side. Good to see you, man. Uh, Monroe, he did it right, Ty Long Strong. He kicked the summer money in the day. He wasn't playing. He my brown bullet. He wasn't playing. He said, hello, Bobby D and Lee D. From Greensburg, North Carolina. Good to see you, my brother. Hey, man, if you ever get a chance, go by Greensboro. They're neat. They're nice people there. They always have smiling faces, and they always want to greet you and, and love. You know, they want to, especially they like they like the friendly people. Just like my hometown, where I was born, in Charleston, South Carolina. They call Charleston the city by the sea. Go that, go by there, and you'll meet people just like me. You know what I'm saying? That right. Let's go, ride train, Bobby Lee T. One Nation. All right, hold on, y'all. Dog on phone, Mister. Hold on. I gotta pull it down again. All right, we got. Uh, all my people in this house with me today. All right, now I got. I need my people in here. All my people in the house say yeah, yeah. Everybody say yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's up? Who we got? Uh. Come on, man. Dog on green. All right, I got to find out who's number two in the house today. Monroe is number one. He kicked the summer money in today. He wasn't playing. Now, who's that number two guy? He said, no sound, Bobby. I got you, man. Uh, I had I have us taking some pictures, and I had my dog on uh, the sound thing in there. It, it stopped the sound. Sorry about that, y'all. Uh, Murphy Hayes in the house today. What's up, Murphy? You good man. So good to see you. So good to see you. So good to see you. Wouldn't want to beat now. Nah. <laughs> Just play it, man. What's up, Murphy? You good man? Murphy is my Goldfinger. Goldfinger in the house today. What's up, Goldfinger? You good man? So good to see you. I can't read the comment. I can't read the comment. Okay, we get it. They said, Congratulations. Uh, congratulations, Dark Hack for number one in the house. Hey, number one is his uh is his choice today. He wasn't playing. He kicked the sum of my money in. He said, this is mine. I'm going to claim it and I'm going to name it. You know what I'm saying? And he did it right, Ty Longo. Congrats, Monroe. Murphy Hayes, you know I got to tell you, right? <laughs> Goldfinger, you know I got to tell you, right? Hey, guess what, Goldfinger? Number two. Yeah. <laughs> so good. To say. Hey, Murphy, we're not coming against you, my brother. We're coming against that number two spot, not against you. All right, let's go. We got right train by the Lee One Nation. Okay, this, this screen is messing up again. Uh, I'll go to, I'm going to go to random comments, okay? I'm going to go to the comments that I can see. So if I get out of order, don't say, Bobby, do you miss my comment? You miss my I, I'm going to what I can see, okay? Ah, uh, man, the screen. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I got it now. All right, he said, uh, hold up, y'all. Man, I got a lot of comments. I missed all these comments. Oh, my goodness. Sorry about that, y'all. I got to scroll all the way back up. Okay. Uh, congratulations, North Carolina. Murphy Hayes said, bring back memories when I, I clock 145 miles mile on my 82 Suzuki. Woo! Murphy Hayes had a bike, 80, 145 miles an hour. Oh my God, you broke the, the sound barrier, didn't you? <laughs> they call you Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> yeah, man. I, you know what, man? Uh, I had a friend, his name was Gary Isaacs. He's from, he was from Jamaica. We was in high school together. We graduated uh, together. We, well, he never graduated. I'm going to tell you a sad story real quick. Gary, uh, his dad bought him a bike, a motorbike, for his uh, birthday, 18 years old, right? And for also graduation. So Gary rode his bike, 
And a week before we graduated, he got taken out on his bike. So because of that, if that trauma in my life, he was close, man. Gary was my buddy. I never, I never had the desire to ride a bike. I never had the desire to purchase a bike because somebody told me speed kills. Now I had, I'm a living witness that Gary is gone. You know what I'm saying? And that hurt me to my heart, man. He was my buddy, man. You know, we were tight. I was so messed up from that experience from Gary. And you know, they called me to go to the funeral. I couldn't go. I, I cried like a baby at home. I couldn't go. I said, I don't want to see him. Like, I, I, I. My mama told me to go. I said, no, nah, I can't do that. I can't. So, ever since then, man, I've not been a bike, a motorbike enthusiast. And I've tried to, I've tried to talk to Lisa D want to get a bike, man. That's why she want to ride a bike. I want to buy a motorcycle. A scooter. And I try to, I'm trying to discourage her against that. But yeah. you know, I, I can't, I can't, I can't do, I can't hold her back for what she wants to do. I always, I, but I'm trying to discourage her because of that, that trauma I experienced. But uh, I will, I will, she wants a bike, that's fine, but I I'm won't get. I'm not driving on the highway. I wouldn't let her get nothing speedy, you know, big, big old, get a scooter. A scooter may be all right. You could just ride in that little area. But uh, that's what I'm about to bike. Let's go, Roger. Who we got? Life in North uh, Carolina. Let's South Carolina. I got that. I got that. Thanks. Let's and hello, Murphy East. Uh, Balance Light. He said hello from Katy, Texas, Bobby D. Lisi. Thank you so much. Hello. Balance Light. So good to see you riding train, Bobby D. Lisi. One Nation on the Green One Love. And y'all got the skills because I'm, I'm in the car and I'm in the dark. But you know what? Nothing don't stop the show. <laughs> Nothing don't stop the show. I come to you long and I come to you strong. Wherever I'm at, you're going to get it right, tight, long, strong. I bring it. I bring it. I bring the heat. Let's go, Ron Train. Who we got? Gunny. Gunny in the house. He said, uh. I take liquid ginger, one tablespoon to 10 ounces of water or juice. Okay. That's a good, that's a good, that's like a tonic. Okay. Ginger and uh, water. Yeah, I drink I drink ginger tea all day long. Turmeric also. I drink a lot of teas. teas. Green tea. Ginger tea, black green teas. tea, black tea. Uh, what else? Is the, uh, <laughs> all kind of teas is good. Teas have coffee. A, <laughs> no, I don't drink that. I drink that too much. But I'm telling you, teas is good for you, for you gentlemen out there, especially when you get older. Teas has a chemical compound on it in it called phenols. P H E N O L S. Look it up. Phenols are good for a whole lot of stuff. Also acts as a tonic. It also uh, acts as a antibacterial, a whole bunch of stuff it does. So drink as much tea, as much stuff like that you can. Leave leave that uh, alcohol, uh, 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 alcohol, leave that stuff alone. That don't do nothing but burn up your brain cells. Some of y'all ain't got a whole lot, they do. <laughs> but leave that stuff alone, man. And if you have to do alcohol, just minimize your your uh, your dip. When you dip in it, take a little bit. Don't take a lot, okay? But I'm telling you, man, if you want to live long in this world and you want your body to perform the things it used to do when you were a young man, drink right, eat right, walk right, talk right, believe right, see right, everything, do it right. Don't do it on the wrong. Do it on the right side of life. And you'll live long and you will prosper. Let's go, right train by who we got. Murphy Hayes, aka Gunny. Congratulations, Lisa will race one day. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, don't get her started, Murphy. Don't get her started. I'm trying to I'm trying to just You know what? It is easier to drive a motorcycle than a bicycle. Yeah, I told you that, Lisa D. I've never ridden a motorcycle myself, but I know the principles of it. If you know how to ride a bicycle, you can ride a motorcycle like that. Because it's not that it's, it's, it's easier. You don't have to deal with the pedals, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and the balance is just like a, a bike, right? Yeah. So, I've never ridden one, but I could, I know I could do it like that in a few minutes. Let's go! Ron Train, Bobby Lee, One Nation on the Green One Love! Life in North Carolina. What's up? I get to see Lisa D ride a motorcycle. Wow! Yeah, you get to see this. Wow. You get to see the Tuba Queen. <laughs> when we do our next live stream, I'm going to have the Tuba Queen on the bike. I'm going to show y'all. I'm gonna show y'all how she did. She did pretty good, man. I must admit, she did really good. Let's go. Uh, where are we at now? You know. Life in North Carolina. Some people are jealous about their other better half. Right. Let me tell you this, man. 
whenever you have a wife, a girlfriend, a lady in your life, don't get jealous of her, okay? Because that's just crazy. Why would you get jealous of somebody that you love? You should support her in every way possible. You know, it's just like Lisa D. I don't want to, I don't, I'm not happy about the idea she want to get a bike, but I would support her if that's what she really want to do. Thank you, Mike. And I know it's not, I know it's not going to, I mean, I have issues about it, but I love her so much that I want to see her do her best and I'll try to help her. But uh, uh, support your people that support you. Yep. Okay. When you come against your lady, it's not too, you, late, let me finish too late to learn. When you come <laughs> against your lady, you come against you. Okay. Because you're supposed to be one, right? Somebody like that, right? You want you gather the power of two. It's hard to divide two. It's easy to divide one because they ain't got no strength. So when you come against your lady, my brother, when you're jealous against her, you're jealous against yourself. A house divided cannot do what? Stand. You want your house to fall down like that? Keep on being jealous of your lady. Keep on coming against your lady. And lady the same way. You jealous against your man? Let it go. Stop it right there. Don't make no sense. Let's go, Lizzie. Life in Canard's girl. I know. That's why they hold back, which is so stupid. Yeah. Stupid. You know, uh, when you when you know that that lady is for you, ladies and gentlemen, and ladies, when you know that man is for you, don't hold nothing back from him. Or don't hold nothing back from her late man. You say, Bobby, you don't know. I got a lot of money. I don't want nobody to take my money. Okay. Then don't marry her. Don't ma that 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 aside that right there. Don't marry her. Just live in with her. Because if you that fearful, you don't need to be her with her because you're too fearful and you're too careful. And you'll never have a good life trying to uh, cherish your Marte instead of cherishing the life of somebody that's going to live with you and be get good to you. Okay? Uh -uh. If you're too fearful about your money, then you need to stay single. You need to stay by yourself and you love your money instead of loving another person. Because your money means more than you than people. And when you you have money mean more than people, you ain't about nothing. Cause people uh, are, are, are God's gift to us. You know? Everybody needs somebody in this world. You think I'm playing with you? No man is an island unto himself. And you better think about that. It's about, you know, I got millions, you know, I just want to do that. Okay. Then don't get married. Don't get a girlfriend. You what you need to do is go to the bank, with Don't your, tell me. What Don't you need to me, this, be quiet, be quiet. <laughs> what you need to do is go to the bank, withdraw your money, put it in the bedroom with you, and look at your money all day long, <laughs> all night long. See how you <laughs> feel. <laughs> and, and when you do that, please, please, when you do that, my guys, let me know how it work out for you. Okay? I can tell you right now, you ain't gonna be pleased with that because money is dry, money is cold. There's no warmth in money. And when you get cold at night, you need somebody to touch, to reach out and touch. You need a warm body, okay? Money can't talk to you. Money can't touch you, okay? Don't play with me. Let's go, Lizzie. Lou, he said, what's up, Bobby D? What up, my brother? Man, I need a woman like your wife. Does she have any single sister? Oh, no, man. My wife is one of a kind, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I only have one sister and, he, and she's married. She got one sister and she got a man. But look here, let me tell you something, man. Uh, you're not going to find nobody like Lisa D, but you'll find somebody for you. Okay, Lisa D was for me. The <laughs> Lord carved her out in this world and, and made her for me. When I was born, she wasn't nowhere, She wasn't even to be thought about. But later on in life, uh, she was there for me when I needed her. And I was there for her when we needed. she needed me. So that was for me. What's for me is for me. What's for you? God got to show you what's for you. And when you find out what's for you, get it, okay? And she will be make you happy and please you, just like Lisa D makes me happy. No, she don't make me, you can't make me happy, but Lisa D is a, ha a joy in my life, you know? and she'll be a joy in your life, okay? So, let's go. Terry Fleming, he said late. <laughs> Terry, what's up, my brother from my love? Mother, Rain Man coming, Rain Man coming. Rain Man, Rain Man, Rain Man. What's up, man? You good? So good to see you. So good to see you. So good to see you. Wouldn't want to be you. <laughs> What's up, man? So good to see the Rain Man coming in the house, man. We feel good when we make it rain in the train today. Let's go. Life in North Carolina. What's up, Rain Man? Terry Fleming. Hello. Rain Man is all right, man. He said good, man. Got to see my brother today. Ride train, Bobby Lee. One nation. Marfa Hayes. I think they hold back out of this truck. 
Right. Um, trash. Trash. When, whenever there is a couple, man and a woman together, whether they live in, whether they uh, marry, whether they fiance, they and they, they holding stuff back. It is correct. It's, it's a matter of trust. They don't trust them enough. Okay. And you know it's okay. Sometimes when you initially get together, it's okay. Because listen to me, good. Trust you trust her, but trust has to be is be built up strong. Okay. Sometimes you don't trust her enough to share everything, and it's okay, man. But if you know that she's for you, you need to let that fearful, that distrust, and that doubt go away. Okay. You know, say, well, Bobby, you know, they, they say these they Filipinos, all they want to do is get your money, man. They marry you, get your money, and then they go on by the business. Okay. I'm not going to say that doesn't happen. It does happen. It happens every day. But it ain't never happened to me. Okay. And as I can say that too, you have to find them. Because you know why it don't happen to me? Because I got the ordained one from God. I got the right one, baby. Okay. And when you find the right one, baby, they won't do that crazy stuff like that. They will honor you, and you will honor her, and you will live in a peaceful life together. So if you got a woman and she can't honor you, you don't need her in your life. And if you got a woman you can't honor her, you don't need her in your life. Y'all need to just call it quits. Y'all do the wild thing and go on about your business. Get, get split up, because it's not going to work. Let's go, Lee D. Rod Train, Bobby Lee, one nation on the group, one up. Sarah Fleming, all good, Sir North Carolina. What's up, man? You good? You good? Let's go, Lee D. Murphy Hayes, hey, Sir Terry. Sarah Fleming, hello, Sir Murphy. What's up? Life in North Carolina. That's awesome, Mr. Terry Fleming. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Everybody hit the like button for one time. One, two, three. Chichi Paya. One, two, three. Chichi Paya. One, two, three. Chichi, Chichi Paya. Hit that like button, y'all. Let's Please. get them likes up. Let's get the likes up now. Come on. You shut my mouth only. Let's get the likes up, y'all. Come on. Hey, she said, I tried to te teach my ex and Sears parking light lot trying to drive a standard shift. She was trying to do 30 miles an hour in a circle. <laughs> That's called a wheelie. And she was doing a she was doing a donut and in a 30 miles out. Oh Lord. Yeah, but you know what? I had you it's very difficult, ladies and gentlemen, when you attempt to teach someone that you love to drive. I can tell you it is very difficult. It can be very hard and very emotional. Lisa D, I can't tell you the number of times Lisa D broke down in tears. Because I told her to do what was right. I said, listen, you got to pay attention. And when I tell you something, do what I tell you. And she gets, she, you know, she gets, <laughs> you ain't got the hell of you. You yelling. That's what I said. She ain't got to yell at me. I said, yes, I do, because you ain't listening. <laughs> when, you start, when you start listening, I'll stop yelling. But anyway, we had, that's how you do. But it's hard, man, when you train your lady, you train your daughter, because I train my daughter too. You train your daughter, you train your son. You know, it's hard, man, when somebody you love. Let's go, Lee D. Sarah Fleming, the last relationship I was I was in was decided that the best option was to leave the toilet seat after the problem was solved and everything came up all right. <laughs> right. That's it, man. Hey, that's what I do now. I leave the toilet seat up. And uh, then, even, I'm going to tell you, look, even after I left the toilet seat up, you know, every now and then you get a leak on the bowl, the toilet bowl. And she get on me about that. I got <laughs> tell you, man. I got now every time, even though I have the toilet seat up, right? I might have a little leak on the bowl. I got to clean. And she got on me about that. You gotta clean that up. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> so every time I do the number one, I make sure the seat is up, and then I make sure there's no stains, no droplets on the bowl. <laughs> because that's what she likes. And I'm there to please her. And I don't want to cause trouble. And I <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Lou, he said, let them go. Amen to that, brother. Yeah, man. I'm telling you, man, let me tell you something. If you got somebody in your life and they cause me strife and that rhyme, you don't need them in your life, okay? They want to act a fool with you. They don't want to go to school with you. They don't need you. They want to use you and abuse you. Let them go, okay? And, and so I know that sometimes it's easy for me to say, let them go. And it's hard for you to let them go. But you know what? I would rather let them go than live a life of turmoil, a life of craziness, a life of drama, 
I would, I would, I would endure the pain of letting them go than to live a lifetime of trauma, drama, and all that. I don't need that, man. When you get to, maybe if you're 30, 25, them years, you can deal with that drama. You can deal with that trauma, you know? But you, when you get to my age, man, I don't need that in my life. I want peace. And if you can't bring me peace in my household, you got to go. You're going to hit the door with me. So don't come to me and you acting a fool with me because I, I ain't ready for that and I ain't out for that, okay? Be right, be tight, long, strong. I'm going to love you. I'm going to care for you. I'm going to take care of you. But you got to do the same. And if you're ready for that relationship, let's do it. But if you ain't, let's get gone. Let's go. Terry Fleming, top the fan. Everybody hit the like button. One, one, two, three. Cheat you fire. One, two, three. Cheat you fire. Hit that like button. Please. Let's go. Get them likes up. Let's go. Uh, Murphy Hayes, women like to think they are obligated to toilet train and man about that dog. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, I don't know. Hey, that's how they do it, though. They, they, got, they got a problem with that. They got a, and I don't know it's a problem, but it's one of their pet peeves. A lot of women don't appreciate that, you know? But you know what I'm telling you something? Even though something, when you, if a man leaves the seat down, you know, you might get a little urine stain on the seat. But what happens, too, women do it, too. You think I'm playing with you? A woman can stain the seat just like a man. Because when a woman, I'm going to tell you something. Y'all might not know this. Y'all better listen on this one. When a woman go to the bathroom, they sit down on the toilet seat, right? Then they do their number one, number two, whatever. But when they do a number one, this is what happens. When a woman uh, urinates in the toilet, on the toilet seat, it's strong, just like a man, and it, 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 it's, it's droplets that come back up, and it bounce up and hit that toilet seat. You think I'm playing with you? I, and then, then, because one time, not Lisa D, but my previous wife, she tried to accuse me a peeing on the seat. I said, no, I had to sit up. I didn't pee. So, I, so what she did, to prove I was right, this is what I did. I waited till she went to the toilet, right? She did her number one. And when she left out the room, well, left out the bathroom, I went right behind her, okay? <laughs> and I saw, I showed her the drop that she did. She, women can, women really? can get, yeah. Women can get drops on the seat just like a man. When, cause they spray it. They, <laughs> a man, a man will pee, right? <laughs> But a lady spray, shh. it's a difference. It's a difference. A man straight pee, shh. but a lady spray, <laughs> and it go everywhere. All right, let go, let's do. Terry, I always said that the toilet seat thing was a way for a woman to prevent her frustration with the way a relationship is heading. That's. That's always a way for a woman to get a band because they know we do it differently. We stand up and do our, they sit down and do this. So they, if they want to jab you, they can always find some way, but you got to just uh, let, the way to put that to rest, Ter Terry, uh, do what they ask you to do. If they actually leave the seat up, leave the seat up. They have to write the ball, write the ball, okay? And then you put that to rest. Then they have to find something else to fuss about. Let's go. Murphy Hayes, I got free, bro. 1100, 850, and 250, and fell down for five or six times. Whoa, oh, he had a motorcycle, three, three motorcycles. Who? Murphy Hayes. Murphy Hayes had three cycles? Whoa, oh, can man. I have the other one? <laughs> <laughs> no, you ain't ready for all that. A dirty bike. <laughs> <laughs> motorcycle, motor, okay. motorcycle men are, are those kind of men that's fast. So Murphy Hayes was fast on the draw. <laughs> Terry Fleming. Yeah, thank you for the donation, sir, Terry Fleming. Thank you so much for the donation to the nation. More He's blessings, saying, much, much love. love. Thank He's you so saying, much, my brother. Here's a donation to the motorcycle. <laughs> okay. Thank you thank so much. Thank you so much, much Terry Fleming, for the motorcycle club for Lisa. We got our chain, Bobby, Lisa, one nation on the group one love. Barbie Hayes, I do turmeric also. Good. Turmeric is good. It's good for uh, inflammation, uh, antibacterial, ginger as well, green tea. Uh, you guys that's not on tea, get herbal tea. Don't get out that, don't get that Lipton stuff, okay? Go to the herb store, get the real ginger tea. And if you ain't got any herb store, go to the store, supermarket, and buy you some ginger root, okay? The ginger root. You clean it, you cut it up. 
boil. And you boil it, okay? It's just like the same thing as tea. Clean it, cut it up, and boil it. Because if we don't have no ginger tea, that's what Lisa D do. She clean it. Turmeric, the same thing. You buy turmeric root in the store too, okay? But yeah, man, the more natural you get, the more natural you're going to be. And the more natural you're going to live, okay? Try to eat natural as much as possible. Try to drink natural and leave that hard liquor and hard beer stuff alone and hard wine. I mean, I'm not saying if you're drinking, that's fine. That's your thing. But drink in moderation is all I'm saying. Don't overdo it. Let's go, Ron Trey. Who we got? Murphy Hayes. If it's thunder shift, you have to learn the friction zone on the clutch. Okay. Yeah, it's there's the several types of uh, uh, motorcycle. things. You, motorcycle. You can have the automatic that they don't have no foot footwork. You just got the, everything on the handle. Is he talking about motorcycle or a car? I don't know. What, what did you say, Lizzie? Clutch. Friction. A clutch is on a clutch. Clutch is on a on a motorcycle, Lizzie. See, she's in the car also. A clutch is in a car and a motorcycle, lady. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go. Martha Hayes, friction friction zone is when you let out the clutch to the point where where the bike moves without using the throttle. Yeah. Okay. So. so they're getting into the bike talk. I don't know. See, I don't I don't have a bike, but I know about bikes. But I I don't I've never ridden one. But yeah, you gotta know about bikes. Uh, but I don't know a whole lot about it. But uh, at least the uh, I don't want you to get a bike right now. You got some more training to do. I have for. to train more. Yeah, she needs more training before she's ready to get a bike. Maybe another six months to a year. Ah! She'll be ready. But right now, she just starting out. Uh, you know what I told her? This is what I told her, man. I said, I don't mind you getting a scooter. But there's a difference between a scooter and a bike. A scooter is almost like a bicycle, but it, it's, it's not as powerful as a motorcycle. And a scooter... It's just for a local, localized, small area riding around. No, I uh, can I finish, please, Lizzie? A bike, a motorbike, a motorcycle is you can go all over the world, long distance drive. I don't want that. I want a, I want a small engine bike, little scooter. She can put, put, and then I get on it too. Let's go. <laughs> Jerry Fleming, when a relationship and I have the difference of opinion, I won't let her know I get quiet. Okay. When, when you have a difference of opinion with your lady, the best policy is to tell her. But sometimes, did you, you turn the ear off? Because it's getting hot in here. Mm, no. Sometimes the best policy is to tell her whenever she's ready to hear it. If you tell her at the wrong time, it's going to cause more trouble. Okay? But sometimes it's better to hold back until it's the best time to say something to somebody. You know, uh, they say honesty is the best policy. It is. But when you choose the time to be honest, it's the better policy. Y'all want to write that one down. <laughs> I said one for the books, baby. Honesty is always the best policy. But sometimes it's important to choose when you give the honesty. It's the better policy. You with me, man? Because when a person's not ready to receive your, your information that you're giving them, they're going to buck up against you. They're going to what? You know, and then it's going to be more trouble. It's going to be more friction. And you don't want that. Your whole thing is trying to avoid friction, right? Let's go. Murphy Hayes, my friend was going to buy me a helmet because she thought she thought I was so tall that I would bump my head entering her parents' house there in the Philippines. I think it was so cute. <laughs> <laughs> she said, you're too tall, you're going to get a helmet to come in the house. Okay. Now, that's just to show you that there are a lot of very, very small people here. If you if you five 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 eight five nine, they call that tall out here, and that's not tall as you guys say. You know what I'm saying? But that's how they do, you know. And they think I'm a big man. I'm not. I'm a small guy, but in their minds, I'm a big man. Let's go, Roger. Who we got? Murphy Hayes. Most women want to sit down now. Want the sit down? Wow. Yeah, most women want to sit down. That's not wrong with that, man. You know, the the bottom line, ladies and gentlemen, is are you going to be uh, happy and are you going to work together or are you going to go and be sad and work against each other got to work together if she asks you to put the seat down uh, put the seat up put the seat up when you do your business what's wrong with that and if you make a stain on the bowl wipe the stain on with the off with a piece of tissue ain't nothing wrong with that and, and so don't get mad because she asked you to do that just say I'm sorry I want to be 
I want to be compatible with you, and I want us to work together in our relationship. So I do it. That's how you gotta do. It. Let's go. Martha Hayes, you're right, baby. No peace, go. Yeah. No peace. Just if you have go. no peace, <laughs> if you have no peace, you have no serenity. You have no calmness. You have no joy in your life. There's a whole bunch of drama, and I don't need that. At this point in my life, I don't want no strife. I don't want no uh, arguing. I don't want a whole bunch of fussing. I done been through all them wars. Why do I got to go back to that war again? It doesn't make sense. If I got to war with you every day of my life, I don't need you. Okay? And if you got to war with me every day of your life, we don't need each other. Go on about your business. And I'll go about mine. It might, I might miss you for a little while. You might miss me for a little while, but it's for the better. It is for the long run, for the long run, and for the long term. Let's go. Martha Hayes, I always leave the seat up and get into argument. Women here, here are both wars. <laughs> they okay. They they got in an argument with you because you left the seat up. What? Are you serious, man? Oh man, yeah, you don't need them kind of women. <laughs> you really had it bad, man. You left the seat up. And uh, and they got to argue, argue with that. Most women want you to leave the seat up because they don't want you to pee on the seat. You know what I'm saying? Crazy, crazy. Let's go. You know what? I have to tell you this. If right, you're in the, in the province, the, the toilet there are open. No? No seat. Right. She's trying to tell you that if you are if you live in the province or if you go to the province, they have what's called a CR. It's like an outhouse. Have you ever heard of outhouse? That's what the CR is. And there's no seats there's no toilet seats in the There's outhouse. No toilet cover. There is a toilet bowl, right? And when they use the number one and number two, the ladies sit on the bowl. They don't have a seat on the cover of the bowl. And when I go down there, I don't sit on the bowl. I said, nah, I ain't playing that game. <laughs> I, I have to stand up. Now, nah, I stand up. When I do, if I have to do a number two out there, I crunch. I don't sit on that bowl because it's to me it's nasty. Let's go. Murphy Hayes sent her to motorcycle training class. <laughs> nah, she all right, man. She don't need all that. <laughs> I don't need it because um, my, my, our maintenance Yeah, there. we got a maintenance guy. He he's a, he rides a motorcycle. He can train her. But uh, 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 she, she'd be all right. Let's go. Murphy Hayes, I have to learn to listen more to my lady. Well, that's important. We both have to. Your lady has to learn to listen to you. And she, you have to learn to listen to her. Both have to learn to listen to each other. Because uh, if you don't, it's going to be strict friction if, in your relationship. Uh, listening is very important on both parts, not just one-sided, okay? Uh, and if you can be a good listener, you can be a good speaker. But you have to be a good listener before you're able to speak. Listening is important. If you want to stop problems, listen, okay? Listen. That's what I had to learn to do. I'm the same shape as you, Murphy. I had to learn to listen. Because when I was with Lisa, when we first got, I was like, don't tell me. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm in charge of this. You don't tell me. And I wouldn't listen. But it's a whole lot. I got. To, I went through a lot of pain. And you mess up. Okay, now, see, see? That's what, that, okay, let's move on, Lisa. Let's go. <laughs> That's it. All right, guys, it's been real, it's been real, it's been real. Yeah. We got to go, we got to go, we, we got, got to, to go. go. This is Bobby D and the Tuba Queen, Lisa D. Thank, thank you thank for watching. Thank you, Sir Terry, for the donation. Thank you so much. For my motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> take, take care. God bless. And peace. peace. Thank you so much.